to survive. Now, on this picture, this is the only picture I can find of her. This woman, Sarah. When I met her, she was three months pregnant. She was 19. She'd been out of care since she was uh, from the age of 17. She'd gone into care at the age of uh, 14 because when she was 12, her, grandpa, her granddad repeatedly sexually abused her. When this was discovered and uncovered, her mother found it quite difficult to cope with the, with the trauma of the father on one side, daughter on the other, um, and wasn't really able to give Sarah the care that, that she needed. And she, went into, she was taken into um, care by the council and came out with a victim's compensation went to live with her aunt, and her aunt was borrowing heavily from her victim's compensation, and Sarah felt very uncomfortable in the house. Uh, her money was being taken. She moved out. She moved into this hostel. Sarah looked pretty much like that when I met her. Um, young, really positive, really friendly, really excited to meet me. Oh, wow, have you got my name down there? That's really... She was three months pregnant. She was going to have a scan the following week. I went up about three weeks later and asked for her, asked to see how the scan had gone, asked to see that her baby was okay. And her friend told me that the problem had been that because Sarah was very tired, and this is what happens when you're pregnant in the early stages of pregnancy, she'd, been, she'd missed the scan, and therefore she didn't have any evidence that she was pregnant. And so when she was sanctioned off benefits for being late for a job seeker's interview, she had no proof that she was, um, no proof that she was pregnant. Um, being sanctioned off benefits means that if you're, if you're late for a job centre interview, if you're uh, in some kind of... Uh, a breach of your agreement with the, with the benefit authorities, they can take away all your money. In Sarah's case, she had nothing. They gave her a crisis loan of £28 a week, uh, which she would eventually have to pay back. Of that £28 a week, £10 went to the hostel for accommodation. So she had £18 a week, which boils down to roughly £2.50 a day to feed herself and her unborn child. And this happened, I met her in April 2011, about in the same month that this uh, that a whistleblower at a job centre told The Guardian that people were being encouraged actively to trick people into coming off benefits, into being sanctioned off benefits, just so they could meet targets, they could meet benefit targets. Worth pointing out that benefit sanctions were introduced in 2000 by the Labour government. If, if you looked at this graph now, you would see the numbers going up and up and up, not quite exponentially, but the number of people who are being sanctioned off benefits is increasing on a monthly basis. In the case of someone like Sarah, she was on £2.50 a day, she was struggling to get by, and so her friend told me when the two men befriended her and told her that if she moved in with them to their house, uh, she could have a colour TV, she could have all the food she needed, she could have a hot bath and hot showers. Um, even though her friend advised her not to, she went with the men anyway. So when I went up to see her three weeks later, she wasn't there, she disappeared, and no one had heard anything from her. Now, we can argue about whose fault it is. Is it the fault of her grandfather? Is it the fault of her mother? Is it the fault? Specifically, however, she was sanctioned off benefits, and this drove her in to what a Victorian level of poverty that leads to that Victorian idea of fate worse than death. Now, part of this pressure on benefits is part of the idea that in some way benefit fraud is taking our money, it's taking all our stuff, there's so many benefit fraud, it's taking all the valuable things that we, we have, you know, they're, they're eating away at the fabric of British care and forgiveness. Um, George Osborne, for instance, has said that... Uh, Benefit fraud accounts for £5 billion a year, which is a shocking sum of money and not true at all in any way. Total overpayments here, you can see, make up 2% of our benefit bill. Break that down, of that 2%, official error is 24%, customer error is 40%, fraud is 36%. So in total, total benefit expenditure is £153 billion. Fraud accounts for £1.2 billion or 1% of that which when you set against Vodafone's unpaid tax bill of £6 billion would suggest that perhaps it's not those people defrauding the housing benefit for 50 quid a week who are the key problem in trying to work out how we're going to pay back the deficit and how we're going to cope with the uh, struggling nature of the economy.